Olá! Olá, como estás? Oh, we're pulling it together here. Give me a moment. Uh, me too, actually. I'm in the process of getting it to go live on Facebook. So oh. just bear with me. Okay. Uh, I can but do I'm three so cups in here. Too. Wait, is this the same thing as a cup the other way? Mm -hmm. What? That's three cups. So yeah, that's the same as yeah. one of those cups. Yeah. Well, three. well, there's dry and there's liquid. This is for liquid. Oh, Deb, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Can I put my three cups of coconut shredded coconut in this container or should I have like the dry cups? Oh, the liquid. Yeah. You know what? For this, it doesn't matter. Dry cups are, I can't see you right now because I'm trying to go on Facebook. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I, this is my Pyrex, you know, liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I see you 30 seconds after you do it because I'm trying to go live. But that'll oh, be fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Sorry to bother you. No, it's okay. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Should just take another second. 701, that's not bad, right? No, not at all. Is anybody uh, else here? I can't see Francis. Another one. Mary Trieste is here. Mary Trieste is here. Mary Trieste oh, is here. Hi, Mary. Hello. We actually I'm, get to talk. I love I it. I know. <laughs> I know. But I've um, I got everything measured. I figure I'm going to write stuff okay. now and then I'll A little bit more. You've got everything measured Michael. already? Well, I made macaroons once before. It was a totally different recipe, but I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, well, you know what? And there is Stuff. no one right way to do it. Right, I know. So I'm looking forward to this, but I'm going to write it all down. And all right, well, we're going to have some fun tonight. Can I just ask you a question? I don't know the answer. Sure, let me just pull it um, to get to me and corn I'll start. Are we okay with corn? I mean, not that I'm kosher or anything, but. You know what? Um, Corn is absolutely fine if you if you are okay with kidney oat, which are the the so called those are the um, uh, the grains that sometimes that traditionally Ashkenazic Jews have avoided right. on Passover. <clears throat> right. um, but um, depending on who you follow and how closely you listen to them, um, mm -hmm. uh, it has been sort of decreed that uh, kidney oat are okay to eat if you want and if you are, um, uh, even if you're observant, uh, you can eat them, but really it's up to personal choice. So the, the long answer to your short question is you can use whatever you want. And in your hands, if you allow yourself to have corn on Passover, like many of us do, um, then you can absolutely put uh, cornstarch in. Because I was reading a bunch of stuff and I thought, oh, hmm, yeah, I it's that. really interesting. I mean, that was just like in the past, oh, right. I don't know, five, six years that that came is, out. Right, right. Is, so, um, okay, well, I'm eating dinner while I'm doing this. Okay. okay. You're eating this. dinner, you said? Mm hmm. Oh, yum. What, what's for dinner today? Huh. Tonight right. was the fast version. Tonight was Trader Joe's. Talk about sharing holidays. Trader Joe's. Frozen latkes. <laughs> oh, because why not? Mm -hmm. And um, tomatoes and sort of like a little salad. And here we go. Applesauce. And I'll just write down everything you say and make them after dinner. Because I had plans for doing this earlier, but it didn't work. Awesome. <laughs> and is that, I saw Lori and Diesel a second ago. We're here. Awesome. And is who is that Michael? I got to know. Is that like a Michael that I know? No, it's a Michael oh. that's new to the congregation this year with my wife, Martha. Oh, hi, Michael. I'm Deb. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see I, you. I recognize too. you from some of the services. Oh, well, I, I hope that's a good thing. That is a good thing. In fact, we this past Friday's service, oh. we thoroughly enjoyed it. Was a, it was a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful effort on everyone's part. Oh, I'm so glad we all had fun doing it. So and I kept telling my kids about it and they all kept saying, oh, gee, they wish they had been part of it. My well, kids you know, are all in their 20s. They can always see it if they want. It streams live to Facebook and then the recordings are all on Facebook. So if you go to the Suburban Temple Facebook page, uh, you can watch it anytime you want. Who authored the, uh, the, the lyrics to the songs? Who wrote Not them? The who, authored, who authored the songs to the lyrics? The tunes. Who put them together? Me. Who put them together? You did that. That was me. very creative. Very <laughs> creative. 
<laughs> thank wonderful. you. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I love doing that. I just, I've been doing it ever since I was a little kid, just, you know, annoyingly mm -hmm. all the time. And uh, so this was an opportunity to actually <laughs> use it for something. That's my wife up in the stairwell. Hi, Martha. Yeah. Motion. It really was a quite a creative service. Good oh, thank you. Yay. Yeah, Saturday Night Live needs you. <laughs> oh, come on. They're pretty funny on their own. I'm sure you would add something positive. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'm hoping we're going to do more of those. We've talked about um, somebody mentioned like picking a decade and choosing like you know rock music pop music yeah, or that'd be great. Like that. uh, my favorite is doo-wop so if you ever do doo-wop i'm there oh, yeah. awesome all right you can take anyway, requests looking forward to the class <laughs> i That's, i get any excuse laurie any excuse it, it's like what was the elton brown show um or where it was the basket and they had to make something with it maybe it was alton brown it was oh you're talking about like uh, iron chef no nah. No, what was no? the one that they, it was the competition. Everyone got the basket, had really bizarre ingredients. Oh, and then gosh. Had, well, you know I what? There are so many of those. I couldn't okay. even tell you. Well, then what we should just do is put a bunch of songs in the basket for you and see what you could come up with. Well, you know what? At Temple Emmanuel. Fun. Oh, it could. Yeah. Somebody just posted chopped. Could be chopped. Chopped, right. Um, I know at uh, Temple Emmanuel, the previous canner, Rick, who was there, um, he would work with the accompanist, um, who was incredibly accomplished musician, um, Bill Schaefer, who actually left there to go be the assistant music director on a traveling um, musical, you know, a Broadway musical that was traveling. Um, and they did exactly that, where they would pull out of a hat like the style of the music. And if, if the tune, okay, it's Micha Mocha, and he'd look at Bill, and Bill would look at Rick, and the two of them would just do it. It was so cool. Is really cool. Wow. Yeah. So let's see. It is seven oh seven. So um, I will just say, how many of you are actually cooking along, and how many of you are here um, to watch and play and listen and ha just get some entertainment? So I'm Dorothea is here baking, cooking along. Yes. And wearing is that is that your special apron again or not? Yes, this is the uh, hi, Michael. Uh, hi. Ba my Beit Shan apron from Israel. Oh, that's uh, right, from our sister city. Yes, from our sister city. Yes, very nice. Very and, cool. And Michael, right here. See, we have two Michaels. There's a new Michael, yes. and this is old Michael. I know it's yeah. going to be like all the Susans. <laughs> yeah, I think both both Michaels might be in the older category. To tell you oh, the truth. Let me oh, fix okay. this. Whoops. We'll do do it. There are no I'm categories. It's a PG rated show. My apron. Okay. Okay. And uh, Michael, meet Lori. Um, Hi. Hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. And and Mary, who always has her beautiful orchids up. Which oh is, well, it's one I, I don't feel like showing. Sometime we'll see your face. I imagine. Are you? Are you? You said you have ingredients out. Does that mean you're also cooking? Yes. I just okay. have to <laughs> inhale my dinner first. Awesome. All right. right. I got to break that. I'm cooking dinner. Let's chop. I don't know. Okay. So um, what you're going to want in addition to the, oh, so let me, let me back up for one second. I want to welcome you to the first official, um, uh, I almost said Kol Hadash. Wow, that's a lot of years ago. Um, <laughs> Suburban Temple Kol Ami Passover Bake Along event. This is, I guess, really our kind of our kickoff to Passover, isn't it? Because we haven't done other Passover stuff yet. So I'm super excited to have you here. Um, and we will see if some other people come in. There could also be people watching on Facebook, which is pretty awesome. Um, you all know me um, by now. Michael and I are old friends now, Michael and Martha and I. Um, <laughs> and uh, so you know I'm the music chick. Um, my other gig is that I bake and decorate cakes. Um, and so um, I, and I've been playing around a lot with macaroon recipes because um, have you ever gone to the grocery store and you look at them and you're just like, okay, I see all these different flavors and they all kind of taste the same. They taste like mm -hmm. coconut and sugar, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of coconut, lots of sugar. And so I've been experimenting um, 
over the years. By the way, stay unmuted. This is completely informal. Just ask questions, talk. I know, Dorothea, you, you've baked with me before, so you know. <laughs> um, but Mary, too. There she is. Um, I mean, I... No, that's all right. No judge. No judging here. I'd be eating if I could. Um, <laughs> just jump right in. Um, totally informal. Um, I will try uh, not to teach so much that we don't finish baking because I have a tendency to just yammer on. Okay, so anyway, um, welcome, welcome. In addition to this live, uh, there will be on Sunday, Rabbi Van is doing a teaching live, um, same time, same channel, so 7 p.m. on Sunday. And then at 7 p.m. on, ew, I can't remember which day it is. I think it's next Tuesday. Um, Rabbi Shana, March 15th, March 15th. It's oh, it's March 15th. So yeah, did you hear that in the background? I have this magic Rabbi Shana. Yeah, wasn't that nice? So yes, um, she is going to be um, making um, potato kugel muffins. So how fun is that? Right? All right. So and it's good. Yeah. So let's get going. Anyway, um, the reason we call this Beyond Coconut and Almond, I already told you one thing. I think macaroons that you buy in the grocery store tend to be way too sweet. Um, and I prefer flavor to sugar. And so I decided I was going to figure something out with that. And the other thing is you can do a lot with a basic macaroon recipe. And that's what we're going to do today. So um, the recipe sheet that will be made available after the class, we're going to post it on the website, is called a strategy for coconut macaroons. And it's a strategy, not a recipe, because you have to make some choices. You have to decide what you want to, how you want to do this. So um, first of all, just for fun, I am going to show you, um, let's see here, share my screen. Um, whenever I change to my second camera, it always takes me a second um, because I have to change the video settings or they tend to jump around. And wow. you'll see it'll look a little bit different <laughs> once I get that done. <laughs> USB and then back to this one. Okay. Did you see it jump and change? <laughs> All right. So you can see all the fun little macaroons that I've uh, got currently. These are my practice macaroons this session. Um, these were all made with the same basic macaroon recipe used several different ways. Um, and so on, I got to spread this out so I can see all you guys. There you are. Okay, so what I did with this same basic recipe, I made um, a plain coconut macaroons. I made coconut uh, coconut ginger macaroons. I made, um, these are masala chai spiced macaroons. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a coffee infused uh, with chocolate chips. Um, this one is mocha. So I used the same coffee infused and then I added cocoa to it. Um, and then this one is, oh, this one I put freeze dried, um, I used freeze dried strawberries and pulverized them and put them in with some, uh, lemon zest. So it's a real kind of fun, happy, bright, springy sort of flavor. So, oh, and then of course this one for the kids, this one spread like crazy. Um, I don't recommend, I had to try them. It has dehydrated marshmallows in it. <laughs> Um, this is dreamsicle, so it's got, dreamsicle. Uh, it's dreamsicle, so it's got, um, I had a bag, I will show you, hang on, where's my, there it is, I had a bag of these dehydrated crispy fruit, all tangerine, sitting mm -hmm. around, and so I'm like, hey, why not, so I took that, and I, um, I have my, Essential kitchen tools, right? Here's a tiny one, a mortar, mort, uh, mortar and pestle. And I just crunched it right up in here, pulverized it, and um, mixed that in. And then I decided it needed some joy, so I put some orange sprinkles and um, dehydrated marshmallows. So anyway, all from the same basic recipe. So 
Um, hopefully, if you guys have um, oh. speaker view set, uh, either speaker view or, you know what, let me go ahead and spotlight myself. All right, because now you can see, you should see me in the corner and then my shared screen big. Is that pretty much what you're getting? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do, I tend to use, I like to use unsweetened coconut. And um, people ask me, why would you want to do that? You're going to add sugar to it anyway. And the answer is two reasons. You can control the amount of sugar you put in. That's the most important. And the second reason is because unsweetened coconut is desiccated, so it can take up flavor, whereas a sweetened coconut already has a lot of moisture in it right are who are you cutting off over there dorothy are we all safe i i'm just doing sign oh i no, see you the, yeah cutting <laughs> off the moisture <laughs> oh. sorry <laughs> sorry i thought you were saying now killed no 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 no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> off with their head so um <sighs> the unsweetened is great because you can play with it sweetened is harder to play with it's harder to add flavors because if you add too much moisture to a macaroon it won't bake well okay um so um there's the coconut choice uh the second thing is the egg whites um i'm gonna just show you this real quick so you can see kind of what the recipe looks like it's got choices in every category and that's kind of mm -hmm. how it's going to go okay so depending on what you choose that Sorry. is going to be mm -hmm. how your macaroons turn out so um you can use fresh egg whites. You can use pasteurized egg whites like I'm using. Four and a half ounces is just a little more than half a cup if you're not big on your measurements. Okay. Four and a half ounces. Um, oh, wait. Is this four and a half ounces? And, uh, so I've got four and a half ounces of pasteurized egg whites. If you want to make it vegan, you can use, um, it's a combination of flaxseed and water. Um, that's also on the recipe if you don't want to add eggs. Um, the next item that we're going to talk about is flavorings. Um, typically, macaroons don't have any extracts in them, which I think is a huge loss. Um, flavorings are essential, and I put vanilla in almost everything I bake. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, I recommend that you choose a good brand of vanilla. See, I'm teaching, and I know you guys probably just want to bake. If I'm talking too much at any point, just tell me and go, okay, can we just start mixing things up? All right, or, or do the Dorothea and, you know, the cane is gonna come and pull me off. We have a um, cane. <laughs> no, that was last Friday at the Broadway Shabbat, no. Okay, so, oh, that would be a vaudeville Shabbat. Okay, sorry. A vaudeville Shabbat. <laughs> I prefer using a really um, high quality vanilla. Some people say that the more that you add to whatever it is you're baking, the less you're gonna taste it. I am here to tell you that I have tried probably 10 different brands of real vanilla and artificial vanilla. I swear I can tell the difference. So I'm a vanilla snob and this is my brand, Nielsen and Massey. I also use their vanilla bean paste. Um, in things that are going to turn out white because the, the little seeds show up. And I love that when the little black seeds show mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. So, but for you can use any extract you want. So if you're making lemon macaroons, you might want to use lemon extract. You won't use as much though, because lemon is a strong extract and that's noted on that sheet. Now, the most important and fun thing I think about using um, the coconut unsweetened is the opportunity to infuse it. And so we are going to infuse our coconut with your flavor of choice or no flavor at all. Um, so this, uh, this is where I will tell you, I haven't tested it, but I wrote in there what I think if you're using a sweetened coconut, I think that you will just use less sugar and I think it'll work just fine. Um, however, my recipe is really written for unsweetened coconut. So if you want it just to be regular flavor and you don't want to infuse another flavor into it, you are going to use um, five ounces of sugar, which is about two thirds of a cup of sugar. And then you are going to use um, three quarters of a cup of hot, hot water. Now, when you mix up this infusion, you want to do it in something you can stick in the microwave. Um, because we're going to have to keep doing that. So I'm actually holding the wrong thing in my hand. I want to use this <laughs> because it'll work better in the microwave. So um, I'm first going to put in 
my sugar here. I don't have my scale nearby, so I'm going to get my you want hot water. Third of a cup. Yeah. Hot, hot oh, water. Okay. Yes. Because eventually what we're going to do is we hot, want hot. to mix in. Um, I mean, we want it to completely dissolve. Hot water will be easier. Um, this is a, uh, for those of you, probably most of you know, this is a dry measuring cup as opposed to a liquid measuring cup. I'm teaching again. I know you didn't ask for that. Sorry. Um, it measures dry ingredients more accurately. And if I was really a snob, I would be um, doing it properly where you actually sweep off the top. For sugar, it's not that important because it doesn't compact. Five ounces of sugar. And then I'm going to put in three quarters of hot water. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And if your water's not running hot, just get three quarters of a cup of water. We're sticking it in the microwave, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Oh, you're gonna... Deb, did you put all the sugar or are you splitting the sugar up? Oh, um, I'm sorry. I actually, do you have more than five ounces? Do you have an extra three? Well, I mean, I have, I'm using Truvia. So I'm, oh, cool. I'm like cheating. And that's not um, cheating. It's worth a try. I, have, I can't wait to find out if, how it works. But if we're going to do different flavors of the coconut. Well, the, the different flavors. Oh, no, we're not going to do different flavors of the coconut. You're going to pick one infusion for tonight. Oh, one infusion. Okay. You mean the 13 I have laid out on my counter, I won't be using? Well, you can use all 13 of them if you want. If you've got enough coconut, you go, girl. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So I got to put all the sugar in the big bowl. Yeah, you can put it all there. I, with the sugar, sugar, I like to add some later, but I think with the Truvia, I think you're definitely better off mixing it in now and it'll probably mix in better than a granulated sugar will mix in. See, mine doesn't even need to be microwave because I have an Instahot, I'm spoiled. What are, you, what are you stirring there? That's just my uh, water and my sugar. Oh, okay, it looked funny on the, okay. Sorry. I know it looks all sparkly, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's, I wanted to make sure it wasn't my eyes. All right. <laughs> now, if you're if you're infusing with coffee, you oh, need oh, three quarters of a cup yeah. of brewed coffee. Three quarters of a cup. Of, do you want to put coffee in here? Coffee and chocolate? Well, here, let's use let's that. Coffee and chocolate this. is an amazing combination, sure. um, especially in the macaroons. Um, if you're using an instant coffee or espresso, like the one I have here, um, I recommend double strength making it double strength because again, it's gonna, you know, you want it to be nice and strong and flavored in that macaroon. If, so I should have more than a lungo or an espresso? You should have what? How many espresso should I put in? Uh, how much, how many cups is it? This is like 1.35 ounces. <laughs> it's a strong though. It's, it's, an, it's an espresso. Yeah. So um, how many of these do I need? <laughs> I would recommend using two of those and then fill it up to three quarters of a cup with water. I think that'll be enough. Two of these. So we need one more of these and then some water. All right. Okay. So if you need to microwave, sure. If you need to microwave your water to dissolve your sugar, go ahead and do that and just make sure it's all dissolved. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other things I have done infusion with, um, uh, is, um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to put some lemon zest in mine. Okay. Um, but I've added lemon juice to it. The juice of uh, one whole lemon to it can be really nice. I'm going to add lemon zest to mine, um, not to the infusion, but to the um, to the mix that we're doing because I am going to be making an apple cinnamon, and I like the uh -huh. brightness of the lemon. I think the citrus will really wake up um, the uh, uh, – I can't even think anymore. Sorry. Um, it'll really wake up the flavor with the apple. It'll brighten it up. I think apple, if it's if it's not sour enough, you don't get that sweet sour balance, you know. All right, I got to remember to put that in. Okay, so now we're going to infuse our coconut. So I'm. This is important too. I want to show you. I've got two different kinds of coconut flakes, or three different kinds actually, because a flake is not a flake, and if your pieces are too big. Um, your macaroons are not going to come together. So I'm going to show you three different ones. When I think of shredded coconut, this is what I see. It looks kind of like that, right? That's shredded coconut. And by golly, it says coconut flakes on it, but okay. Here's another one I've got. This one is called 
flakes also these are big old flakes yeah. this will not make a good macaroon as it is okay um you have to grind it and then here's another one that i've purchased before as shredded coconut flakes that's really fine yeah now the fine ones work great the flaky flakes like this one uh works relatively well but sometimes doesn't quite stick together because they're kind of big pieces and this one you have to stick in your food processor so um we are going to use um and and here's the other thing they all measure differently mm. so um when i put this in my food processor if uh you don't have to use a food processor or a blender to grind them up as long as your shreds are of the medium or fine variety if you have something like i have like this it's you you gotta make it smaller or it's not going to stick together um i have learned that seven ounces of coconut flakes is approximately two cups so if you have a bag that's seven ounces that's two cups and hopefully you have another cup lying around and if you don't um then don't worry about it you can just use less of everything else all right so i know this is two cups i'm going to use i'm going to put the small one in here and then i'm going to put half the big one or a cup of the big cup and a half of the big one a handful something like this that you're not balancing acids and stuff like that it's not an exact science and i'm less worried about measuring on some of this stuff also because this is my third batch of macaroons in four days <laughs> so i cannot tell a lie i've been practicing. Yeah, this would be cool. well, that would be great i don't know what i'm going to do with all of those and what i've discovered is that it only takes about 30 seconds in mine um, to get the perfect flakes so i'm going to mute while i do this because i know y'all don't want to hear it <laughs> Oh, sorry. Sound effects. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Now, this is really boring with no sound. All right. Um, I've been asked before, because I did this. This was actually one of the first lives I did last year on my cake page. Um, I mm -hmm. did macaroons because, of course, that was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so this is mm -hmm. what it looks like now. It mine all looks like that finely shredded stuff, which is the way I prefer it. Um, but you can use your regular shreds. You're fine. All right. Then I'm going to dump it into my infusion liquid here. Deb, can I ask a question? I have no, no questions allowed. Oh, I have. My coffee in my infusion liquid, am I, if I'm going to use vanilla, do I put it in my infusion liquid? You can if you want. Is, is that when I do all my infusions? You know, I, I usually or, add it to my egg whites, but you're asking oh, the question. I, I can't those. think of any reason why not. So then you want to mix it up well. And we are going to let that now mine is looking kind of dry so mm -hmm. this is where your eye is very helpful okay if you have some experience or if you're not it should take a little while for it to soak in mine is completely dry in the bottom i'm going to add a little more water to mine okay because i don't want my coconut to be too dry if your coconut is super dry in your macaroons what you're going to end up with is a really um super chewy macaroon it's going to take you a while to chew through it and you may not want that so, all right. So I just plopped in a little bit more water. Good my yeah. fancy measuring method of my eyes. What, so what flavors do you guys think you're going to make tonight? Who's got laid out some flavor stuff that they're going to thinking of putting in? I'm just going to do vanilla, but you can chocolate chips. So I want to see how I can add the chocolate chips. Awesome. Do you got mini chocolate chips or regular yeah. size? Mini. You said mini, but not now, right? I don't do that. Nope. Okay. Not yet. Okay. We want to, we don't want to add anything beyond our infusion liquid yet 
Okay. Um, and we're going to let this sit for 10 minutes while we prepare the other, or for five minutes, whatever it takes, while we prepare the yeah, other yeah. stuff, because we yeah, want the coconut to really soak this up. Looks good. Mm -hmm. So that when you're done, sure. you shouldn't see yes. any more liquid in the bottom after it's all soaked in. But this yeah. also, you'll notice it's more the texture of what you get when you buy a sweetened coconut, right? Okay. So um, your infusion is infusing. So you can just set that aside. And then um, the next thing we are going to do, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at my list here. Okay. So um, I want to show you some different textures that you can get depending on how much you whip your, oh shoot. Did that one get eaten? No, it didn't. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so there are two ways so this, <laughs> this one is a hundred percent lemon. Okay. And you'll see it's a completely different shaped feeling cookie than this, right? Look at the difference. Mm -hmm. And the reason it has less coconut in it, not beca um, because the recipe ended up making more cookies because I really whipped the heck out of the eggs. Um, if you want a lighter macaroon like this, that is, is a little cakier and less chewy, and airier and all of that, you can get it. You just have to whip the egg whites until you get soft peaks. And you can do that with your hand. It doesn't take too long. It's amazing how fast that happens. Um, you'll have a much wetter um, consistency of your batter, but it works. Um, I don't prefer the meringue style, but I wanted to show you that because it's on the list. You can do that um, if you prefer a lighter macaroon like this. These I always picture with those candied cherries on the top, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I downloaded what I thought you had done with all the ingredients and I kind of made it into, I don't know what you can see and what you can't. It looks like a recipe and I'll add this. But the thing you held up with all the columns, where do we find that? Ah, that's going to be posted after this event. Got it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, not because we're hiding it, but primarily because I just finished it like 10 minutes before <laughs> said event. <laughs> but I wasn't going to post it anyway then because I didn't want, um, yeah, I didn't want people, um, these incredible students like Mary working ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, it's easier for me if I write it down and I print it. Then I have Absolutely. It. I'm the same way. And even if I have a recipe on my iPad or whatever, I still print it because I like paper and then I can take notes on it and all of that. I'm with you, my friend. Then I put it in my cookie. Okay. So while we're talking, oh just God. make sure just, that you just like this. frequently reach over and kind of stir your infusion just to make oh, sure just that. that your dry <laughs> stuff gets on dry. So anyway, I showed you the oh two types. It tastes so good. That was great. Who's eaten it already? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Smells good. good. Okay. Now that's the advantage of using pasteurized egg whites is that you don't have to worry. And there's no wheat flour in here. And so you don't have to worry about eating it raw. So go to town, my friend. Wait, I have a quick question. When do yes. we add the egg whites? Oh, wait, we haven't done it there. yet. Oh, okay. All right. We got to do the work first. How oh, many of you I have will. seen one of my classes and know about one of my favorite kitchen tools? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love you, Michael. Okay. Um, this is one of my favorite little kitchen tools. It's called a stabilizer. Um, it's got two sides that you can use. For a larger bowl, you use it on this side, and it keeps your bowl from moving. So if you're whipping egg whites, you can put it at an angle like this. Mary, don't you need one of these? I do need one. Right? Um, you can put a pot of hot water on it. Um, you can put a smaller bowl in it like this. Um, it's amazing. And you can whisk with one hand and you don't have to hold the bowl. So that's why I like Never it. Never seen that before. All right. So now we are going to take our egg whites. And then I'd like you to add three more ounces of sugar if you have it hanging around. I decided after I made this, the time wasn't sweet enough. So oh, okay. three ounces is, oh boy, let's call it um, a scant half cup. I'm going to, I'm going to add there are seven ounces sugar, in a cup. So sugar. I'm just going to add like another third of a cup of sugar. 
Okay. I'll just keep this going. Okay. Yeah, you grab grab your too. whisk if you have one. And this is where we add the vanilla. Um, so if add you're adding one. vanilla as a flavor, you want to add um, about a teaspoon is what you need. Really if you, you are adding <laughs> other okay. things like Infused. lemon or almond, they are much more potent. Be careful. Oh. Only add half if you're going to add lemon or almond. And other, other ones can be different as well. So I am going to add a teaspoon, and I'm going to... I'll behave and measure this one. Um, I have a calibrated hand with vanilla, so I usually don't measure it. But I uh, get my nice little teaspoon. Mm -hmm. I go through about three quarts of vanilla every year. <laughs> so. All right, so you want to whisk it. And because there's not much of it, it actually froths up pretty quick, right? Yeah, so yeah. if you are going for the standard garden variety, like the plateful that I showed you, um, you just need to stir this until it's all well mixed. Um, and that's really about it. You don't want it to really expand. If it expands too much, you're going to end up with a really loose batter. And then you're going to end up with the cakier meringue style, OK? So it really just needs a good mix. All right, I'm going to mix this guy one more time. Now, um, is anybody adding cocoa? Dorothea and Michael? Add, should we add cocoa, Michael? If you guys want to add cocoa, now is the time, and you're going to add it to your infused coconut. I think we're good with what we have because we're gonna add chocolate or sea salt. So we have our, chocolate chips. We have not, chips. Not the chocolate but, chips, yes. Yeah, let, me, let me say it this way and you guys can decide. If you okay. are gonna add cocoa, you're gonna add, if you wanna do um, the whole batch, you'll add a quarter cup, which is a lot. Yeah. And that makes it really deep chocolatey. If you only wanna do part of the batch, um, then you're gonna add it later. I like to add it to the dry because it distributes better and it doesn't get clumpy. Whereas when you add it into this, it sometimes gets clumpy. Okay. Do, you, do you taste the espresso at all when you do that? Because I'm not a coffee person and I get really turned off by that, but the chocolate would be amazing. Yeah, um, so. um, what I would do is you make a weaker coffee and still use okay. the coffee if you want chocolate because coffee yeah. brings out the flavor in chocolate mm -hmm. like nothing else. Um, so I would make like a half strength coffee. Um, so if you were going to use like a, an instant coffee or espresso like this one, um, yeah. I would use instead of a tablespoon, I would use like a teaspoon and it'll just give you just enough to really bring out that chocolate flavor. Okay. But I won't taste it. No, you, you shouldn't taste it. No. no okay. No. Good. Okay. Yeah, she said not yet. All right, so now we're going to make our basic batter. So we're going to add, I'm going to turn this straight up again. Okay, I'm sorry, but I've got another question. No, don't, no, sorry, keep okay. coming. Does it matter yeah. if you add the coconut to the egg whites or the egg whites to the coconut? Uh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, if you are doing the regular macaroon like I am, yeah. Um, where I'm not beating the heck out of the egg whites first, it's fine to do it either way. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, if you're making those light and airy ones, um, you are going to want to um, add the egg whites to the coconut Wait. and then fold it. So yeah. if, if I were doing that, I'd be folding like this. Right. 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 But we're, uh, if you're not doing that, you can just mix with abandon. Okay, and these will be the puff, the fluffy ones, not the flat meringue ones, right? Uh, if you're not right, if you, um, I wouldn't call them fluffy. I would call them no. ball shaped. They're actually um, more no. dense than the meringue style ones, but that's kind of what we're all used to, and that's fine. All right, so now is the time when, if you want to make more than one flavor, you want to divide it up. Okay, and this is where people who like to follow recipes get a little bit scared have no fear it's okay um what so this in and of itself this is a coconut macaroon we have just made a standard coconut macaroon um with vanilla because vanilla that's all i can say i love vanilla um 
if if you are making a um, if you want to split it up and make various things, you can. I'm going to show you a couple things that I did. I saved some batters to show you. All right, so this is my coffee with chocolate chip. Mm -hmm. So I split, and this is the one I made with the bigger shreds. So you can see there's a lot more texture in this. And that's the one that ends up looking like that. Okay, it's kind of haystacky looking. Um, when you break it open, it kind of falls apart. It stays together, but it's very flaky inside. And that's this one. And then just for comparison's sake, I haven't even opened this one yet. Where is my strawberry? So this is the one. Is anybody adding um, freeze-dried fruit? Not today. Okay. So this is the batter that I have where I added freeze-dried fruit. But this is a much, you can see it doesn't have those big flakes in it. This is a totally different texture. So this one is strawberry and lemon. It's got pulverized strawberries. It's got lemon zest. And I infused it in... Uh, essentially a really strong, sweet lemonade. Um, what else do I need to show you? The, and the other ones, they just look the same. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show you all those. I'm gonna bake some more of them. Um, so now, um, while I have my regular one, I'm gonna split mine in half, roughly. So I'm gonna take half of it and put it back in the bowl that I infused in. I'm not measuring, I'm just slopping it out. That's why I said, don't get nervous, it's okay, trust yourself. So if you're gonna add chocolate <clears throat> chips. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, is, is a member of my family nearby? I wouldn't know that. Okay, no, I'm actually hoping that they'll hear me. Um, excuse me for one second, I don't know if my cord's long enough to go around, but I want to get my mini. Oh, I can do it. I got this. I'm using a microphone because the sound is so much better, but it means I only have 16 feet that I can go before my cord runs out. Okay. If you're going to add chocolate chips. Um, okay. So chocolate I know right Mary, here. you're adding chocolate chips, Dorothea yeah. and Michael, you guys are adding chips, right? Yes. Okay. And I know Lori has an interest in chips, so that's good. Um, Always. <laughs> um, I've got a rule of thumb that I try not to add more than about a tenth of the volume of what's called an inclusion. Anything that's not going to get mixed in and kind of disappear in your batter. Oh, I forgot the starch. Uh, we I need a starch. I had put, I, I actually added it today. If you don't have cornstarch or potato starch or tapioca starch or anything like tapioca. that. Tapioca. Tapioca starch works. That's what I'm using. Okay. I, I just, just want to know, Dorothea, is there a glass of wine nearby? Or yeah, two? two. Like a, Do you need one? <laughs> no, no. I'm wondering if you're having one. What, yeah, we, we want what she's drinking. <laughs> yes, tapioca. I forgot like to add that. So to each half, I would add like a tablespoon. And what this does is it helps bind it together. So we're going to we're going to break the rule. Normally, I would have mixed this in first with the coconut. And then you want to also add a pinch of salt to each. See, I'm not looking carefully enough at my recipe. I get totally off script and then it's, you know, it's over. Um, I'm a big fan of the Himalayan sea salt. Um, me too. You too? So tell me why, Michael. Yes. Oh, why do you like is it? The pink, is the Himalayan pink okay? Yeah. But tell <laughs> okay. me why you like it. I want to know. Tell me why you like it. I like the, it's got, it tastes very salty. Good taste. It's got good taste. You know why it has good taste? Who knows? Why yeah, does it taste different than, than regular table salt? Yeah, it iodine. Comes from the water. There's no iodine. Oh, say that again. What, Michael? It comes from the mountains. The, what? the water. So what is it that gets into the salt from the mountains? The minerals. Minerals. It's got a very high mineral content. 
Himalayan oh. sea salt has around, um, I was reading it has something like 15% of it is minerals and not sodium. So it's actually lower sodium than table salt. How do you like that? It's pretty cool. I like it. So it does add extra flavor. Uh, it It is not a source of iodine. Um, and that's a whole other story. If you make a lot of candy, you have to be really careful about what kind of salt you use because it can affect it. Okay. So we've got our salt and we've got our starch in. So what I was saying about inclusions, inclusions are anything that don't get mixed in. So salt is an ingredient, chocolate chips, which retain their shape, are an inclusion. Um, dried fruit, if you're going to put raisins in it, um, if you're going to put, um, uh, like I, I have some uh, diced ginger that I put in the other ones. So those are inclusions. Don't use more than 10% because you don't want to affect its ability to bind together. Right? Um, what was I going to say? Okay. So we're going to use about 10%. So here's my fancy measuring method. My hand right here. Yeah. So I think that's about right. To me, it's about a handful to half a batch. You want to put yours in first? You, you do it. Your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, because I'm going to do some of mine. Um, with the chocolate, actually, Jacob said not to add. My son Jacob is my primary consumer, and uh, he did not want them to be chocolate, so I won't add chocolate. Oh, you need more ginger. All right, so it should you should end up with something that looks kind of like that. So it looks like they're dispersed. You don't want to short anybody their chocolate chips, but you want your macaroons to stay together. All right, now my other one, mm -hmm. I am gonna do a quick dice on an apple because I really wanna test this apple cinnamon idea. Um, I have a bad habit of cutting myself in the kitchen when I'm not super duper careful. So here's another gadget that I have. I use um, the gloves that, um, you know, it's kind of like you shred, you. You don't shred your hand, okay? So when I'm peeling or dicing, I'm not dicing, when I'm peeling or um, grating, I always, always, always use a glove because otherwise we get a little more of Deb and her food than we need. Um, I am using some old apples. Any of you who, did any of you take my class? I don't think any of you did. I taught a class about, um, last semester about trying not to waste food. So this was a really bruised up apple that nobody in the house was eating. So I thought, huh, I'm gonna put it in here and nobody will notice. Um, I am big on trying not to waste food. You will notice. All right, so I'm gonna just put some diced apple in here. I have no idea how much to put in, but um, you know, you seem like a group of people who allow a nice experiment. So, Dorothea, what did you end up putting in yours in the end here? Oh, well, we split ours into three different oh. bowls. Okay. And ginger. we have, what's this, dark chocolate chips? Yes. In one, oh, this is the ginger here. Oh, dark awesome. Dark chocolate chips. We have sea salt caramel in the second one. Mm. And then oh. in the third one, we have diced candied ginger mango. I'm speechless. I, I thought there was a momentary pause there. Don't don't you guys think that sounds awesome? The caramel sea salt sounds very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, how did you add the caramel? What did you use to it to make caramel? We just bought it like that. It's called Hershey's sea salt caramel baking oh, chips. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And do you yes. have do you have any flaked sea salt, like a Malden sea salt? that you can add to the top as a garnish or kosher salt even maybe? Oh, we have kosher salt. Compliments you of your last You try a little bit because last. it'll give you that nice little bite right at the beginning, right. you know, would, if you want. Would we Don't do add this too much of it though. It's not a pretzel. Would this be for the sea salt caramel macaroons? Well, that's what I was thinking. I'm. I don't okay. know if it'll be good or not. You could try sprinkling a, sprinkling a little bit on the top. I have what's called Malden sea salt. It's a flaked salt that actually it's beautiful crystals and it actually looks really cool. Um, cool. Also, 
So I would, um, I just kept the glove on because why not, right? Knife. Okay. This is going to be great. <laughs> Isn't it though? Ooh, that's enough. Oh, I don't want to add any more than that. And then, oh, now that I took it off, I'm going to zest the lemon into there too. What about, um, so Mary, you're adding chocolate chips. Are you adding any other flavors? So I'm going to try one, I mean, I made it basically two-thirds and a third. So I'm going to try one just, just, you know, the recipe that I made before is- Try me again, I can barely hear you. You're going to do uh, one? One with like two-thirds to a third. So the two-thirds have the chocolate chips. Oh, yum. Okay. And the other one, um, I'm doing plain. And then the recipe that I had made before, a um, long time ago, was you, you form them and then you dunk them into chocolate. So they, they have the whole melted chocolate on them. So oh, try. yum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my family won't want it super. Are you a, do you like, do you like to bake a lot, Mary? Is this like a thing yes. for you? Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Not like you. We have a lot in common. <laughs> I got to get to know you better. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget these. All right. Making so um, I'm also going to put some cinnamon in here because I wanted apple and cinnamon. Cinnamon Ooh. is a beautiful, beautiful spice. You got to make sure you use enough of it. It's one of those that you can, you know, a recipe can frequently bear a lot of it. I'm putting a tablespoon. Wow. This half, because I really want to taste it. My right. problem is I'd want to add everything to the recipe. I know. That's why you get to split it up. It's, yeah. And you can like, make it again. Like everything bagel. Right? <laughs> Very good. Maybe we should do that, but not on Passover. No, <laughs> the everything matzah. <laughs> we could make everything mandel bread. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh. I just need to have a working oven. That's all. Oh, okay. no. Game. <laughs> I haven't had a working oven in close to two years. Oh. Yikes. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. All right. So do you have a sheet, you need a cookie sheet that either has parchment paper or a Silpat um, silicone Ooh, liner, three. anything like that. You're, or you might have three, I don't know. One for oh, each flavor. These, All right, I've been using this little one because I was experimenting. Um, these don't spread very much. Uh, if you ever make the meringue style ones, they do. Right. These should not spread. Oh, shoot. Ken washed something for me and then left it on the other side of the room. Hmm. All right. Hang on. Oh, my goodness. Will a cookie, will an ice cream scooper work? Yes. In fact, I was going to recommend that you use one. Um, but a smaller than an ice cream scoop. The one that I'm using is about... A small one? The one that I'm using, I think, is about a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons. This is the one I'm using. Hand size. Um, if you don't have one of these, um, never fear. You can either use a tablespoon like this. Let's see if this will work. A tablespoon, OK. You can use a tablespoon, but you're going to have to kind of remound it, right? That makes a small one, a little guy. Um, but this is my bigger one. I'm going to measure out my apple ones first. So what I usually do is I kind of compress it into the, uh, into the thing. So I'm pressing it against the side of the thing and then adding more, okay? Because I like to kind of compress it like that. Is it too soft? It needs more binding tapioca. Uh, question: If it doesn't bind, it's falling apart do? like mine and yours. Add some more tapioca. Yep, I'm yeah, gonna add another tablespoon tapioca. to mine also. Yeah, yeah. mine's nice and moist. Yeah. I wonder if it made a difference okay. when we added it. I don't think I'm so. Too. But... I also might have the amount breakfast. wrong because I couldn't see my recipe. Maybe it was uh, two tablespoons for a half. Size is okay unless you can find the other. Now, the other thing that you can add um, that will help bind it up a little bit, not as well as a starch, um, you can add almond flour or coconut flour. That's 
that's okay. already been ground up completely or any other kind of non wheat non uh whatever if you if you want to keep it kosher for passover don't add any of the prohibited grains uh if you don't mind and you want to eat it any other time of year which you can always do you need more and more you can add whatever you want all right it's still it's not going to stay together perfectly don't worry about it when you put it in the oven it'll stick together better I'm trying to watch oh. the time here speaking um, of the oven do we need to preheat it uh yeah that's a good idea sorry mine's already on 350 i forget i it's not fair mary i i uh i know that was dorothea but i'm thinking of mary because i didn't give the recipe it's oh. right there at the front that we're supposed to turn that on yeah. at 350. Don't worry, this will be fine. So this I'm just going to kind of pile it back up again. I had to do this with my other batches too a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. I prefer that to having them too you tight. Them? I'm not sure. I'm going to mix it together. Another thing that binds it really well is cocoa powder. That really helps too. Don't worry, baby. We got it. In there. No, thing. I know. I think we may have I'm loving listening to you guys. You're so cute. We either gave it to somebody or <laughs> between, between California and Ohio, it's somewhere, found its way somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. No, Other Michael, how's it going out there? I forgot your, are you, uh, are you Martha Fleischer? Are you Fleischer? Yes. Oh, okay. So the other screen is your wife, Martha. Okay. Yeah, we're in stereo. Oh, I see. Are you, do you have any questions or thoughts about any of this? No, I'm enjoying learning about the gadgets as much as the recipe. Oh, I know, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting one of those things to make my matzo balls. Here, I'll give you more. I can rip up the uh, egg whites for the matzo balls. Oh, the, the, the stabilizer? Yeah, your stabilizer. I can't live without that thing. Oh, well, I don't know how I have, but somehow I'm not right. going to. Oh my gosh. You know, I have, I have um, pretty painful arthritis in my thumbs and it makes it really hard to hold onto a bowl and do something, you know, you can't grip it very well. And the ones with the handles, they move all over the place and all that, but boy, oh boy, that thing is perfect. I also use it to um, hold my icing when I'm using it. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's I will say with all the different flavors, I uh, the, the the thought occurred to me that you can do a green one for uh, St. Patrick's Day too. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> so um, I I actually make made one last year that was uh, used matcha green tea powder, um, and uh, I chopped up some craisins and put that in. Ooh. I've done it with pistachios and, oh, that and would be, yeah, that would be good pistachios. Right, yeah. you can use the the bits of brickle. You know the like toffee bits and put those in there's so many things you can do but the the trick is not to overload it with anything and keep it in balance so that it actually bakes and stays together it doesn't look like it's going to stay together but it really does i promise well, on my computer, but that's okay. i'm just gonna wipe my hands off here yeah, so Michael, I am such a gadget geek. Um, I did a spot on Channel 3 um, last fall. They were getting ready for um, holidays and stuff, and um, they introduced me as a quote-unquote self-professed gadget geek, which I thought was hilarious. And, you need an apron for the, with that on it. I know, right? i got to get my thing. So the other thing that you can do before you put these in the oven is you can put something on top of them. So those of you who are doing the salted caramel, um, you can put little flakes of um, salt or um, uh, flakes of salt, depending on how much salt you like. I have here, this is a, um, no, you can't see that very well. Let me try to show you this way. This is a uh, crystallized chunky sugar. Um, that makes kind of a nice crunchy topping. This one is an Indian sugar. They put a lot of this on their desserts. Um, I'm trying to think what it's called. It's way over on the other side. But I am going to put a little bit on top of mine just because I like the added crunch. You can also, if you're making it with chocolate chips, um, this is a good trick for chocolate chip cookies too. Um, always save a few chocolate chips and put them right on top. 
because it doesn't it look so much better mary i like that idea yeah, yeah. um Ooh. they look totally they look so much better and more appetizing because you can actually see them like this right so you want to just kind of leave them on right on the top there look at how much better this one looks than this one right this one needs some friends Why do we need and then you know while you have them in your hand you can always eat them of course it's a beautiful <laughs> thing these are so big I can't all right so when you're ready you can put them in the oven they take 15 to 20 minutes in the oven and you will know that they are done. I always said it for the lower amount of time. You know that already, those of you who are bakers. It should set it for the lower amount of time. And how do you think you know if they're done? Okay, I know what I'm doing. Give me that. two things oh, that'll happen so you'll know it's done. All right. Eileen Brown, I don't know. Come on, you've made macaroons, Mary. How yeah, do you know they're done? What do they what do they look like, sound like, hear like, taste like? They're lightly, they're lightly brown on top. They're gonna be very lightly brown. What's another thing you'll notice? Just the mango. If you're sitting in the other room, have you ever noticed right before your timer goes off? I'm oh, sorry, I should do this. Right before your timer goes off, what happens? You can smell it, right? Right. So that's the other trick is you gotta really pay attention to your senses because Sometimes your timer's wrong. Um, an oven, uh, this is another little random factoid. Um, ovens do not go like this. So the temperature doesn't go up to 350 and then, oh, look at that, it stays at 350. That's not how ovens work. How ovens work is they go up and up and up, they hit 350 and they go booty to let you know they're preheated. And then they keep going up a little bit and then they go like this and they keep going like this and up and down and up and down. And depending on your oven and how well calibrated it is, it may take longer or shorter. So always set it for the shortest amount of time and pay attention with your nose. If you start to smell those brownies, they're probably close to done. Even if your timer still says you have eight more minutes, okay? Just saying. All right, so yeah, so they're gonna look lightly brown, like Mary said also. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll show you one of the white ones you can see, yeah. right? So it's got a little bit of brown on it. The bottom has this beautiful lightly browned, you know, whatever. Any questions? When do we eat? Okay, well, give me- They're all busy. Okay. <laughs> so we do, um, if you are, you know, done that you've, you've started baking everything and all that, you don't even necessarily have to stay on if you don't want to. Although um, we've got, we can very much stay on because I'd love to see your finished goods. Um, uh, but if but you're you, not leaving yet, I'm not <laughs> leaving you, yet. You. I'm going to pull out my chair and sit down. How about that? To post the recipe. I'm going to try not to catch my cord on anything. Are you posting the recipe? So what else, what else are you guys making for Passover? It's a wonderful question. It's a long way away. <laughs> I know it is a long way away, isn't it? Oh, let's talk about storage. That's a really good point. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So with all these macaroons that we're making, um, <laughs> if you don't eat them now, which you can certainly do, um, the best way to store them so that they're good until Passover is to freeze them. Um, and then, uh, you know, just what I would do if you do freeze them, you want to, I would double wrap them in Hi. <laughs> diesel. He just, did he just sauntered by? Yeah. Yeah. He's streaked by. Um, so if you Look, do freeze it's them, Ken going into the oven or the fridge. What's that? There's Ken behind you. Yeah, he's going into the, the other oven. Oh, the I'm, other I'm oven. Okay. I have the sneaking one already. I have the best kitchen ever. Um, so I've got uh, two ovens behind me that open at um, ergonomically comfortable heights, which is fabulous. Um, yeah, that's the meatloaf. Meatloaf macaroons. There's an idea. Sorry. 
Um, anyway, so go ahead, uh, you can freeze them, but then when you're ready to pull them out of the freezer, I recommend that you pull them into the fridge overnight and then put them on the counter, but keep them wrapped the whole time. They'll be happier if they thaw out before you open them. You don't want the condensation all over them. Otherwise, Should they be individually wrapped? No, not necessary, no. no. Okay. Not unless you're trying to keep yourself from eating them and you make yourself unwrap each one individually to keep you out of them. <laughs> So another recipe that I have, so I'm gonna name one and then I wanna hear you guys what your favorite family recipe is for Passover. Um, actually, I can go last. Lori, do you have a favorite family recipe? Well, <clears throat> mine is my mom's matzah farfel, but everybody else in the family, my mom made this lemon sauce that would go over the sponge cake. Um, and they, uh, they, I mean, we're still looking for that recipe somewhere, but it wasn't one of my favorites, but it was definitely the family favorite. Ah, okay, it sounds delicious. Yeah. What about you, There was Michael? one bowl one? used one time a year and it was for the one lemon One time sauce. a year, there it is. Once. Michael and Martha, do you guys have one? Sweet potato pie, my, my, my wife makes it with a matzo meal crust. With what kind of crust, I'm sorry? The matzo meal crust. Oh, cool, so like a real, like a dessert pie. Well, actually, we use it as a side dish. Okay. All right. And, no, so and, and my, my personal favorite is the flourless chocolate cake, which is, yes. yeah, which is divine. <laughs> it's not to love, right? Do you make right. it with um, primarily egg whites or almonds or both? No almonds. Just It's literally just like a chocolate souffle. It's really quite oh, delicious. What time it's is dinner? Yeah, <laughs> coming right, coming right up. It's, uh, it's an enterprise, but you probably would not find it an enterprise. But I for probably me it's would. Enterprise. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm more of a decorator than a baker, actually. I, ah. I, I'm a decorator first and a baker second. Um, it was a necessary thing to learn so I could decorate. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, so, someday I'll show you both the birthday cakes my mother made for me and the birthday cakes I made for our kids, which were not particularly professional, but they had, they had pizzazz, all of them. Awesome. I'd love to see them. What about you, Mary? Do you have a favorite Passover recipe that you can tell us well, about? It's not particularly Passover. It's just the things that my family loves. Um, so we do, my husband makes a really wonderful Caesar salad. And we always do, we do lamb and or chicken, depending on Ooh. Anybody else? Um, and I have this wonderful, one of the few recipes I still have from Julia Child, like back, which is a coating, and I make it and I put it in their fridge, and it's the lamb. And it's just, you mix it all up so you don't have to do the garlic separately. So it's garlic, mm -hmm. and ginger, oh, um, olive oil, and I'm missing one thing, but it's wonderful. Sounds delicious. You know, I don't know why I've never made lamb for Passover, but that's a great idea. Um, oh, I think there's a reason. I forget what it is, but I think there's an actual um, uh, there's an actual uh, religious reason why people don't eat lamb. But I don't, you know, I don't know what it is. I just, or maybe that's just what my parents said. Who knows? I well, I actually thought it was a traditional thing for some because probably of, I'm probably I probably wrong because of the Paschal lamb. Yeah, yeah. The, the lamb shank, the shank bone, and the and, yeah. That's interesting. That might be an interesting question to explore. Yeah. What about the, oh they're they're chatting over there. I was going to ask pollsters what's what's your favorite uh, Passover uh, recipe that you use. Well, Deb, we're creating them as we speak. It's always a story, isn't it? <laughs> Corned beef hash. Corned oh beef. Hash. <laughs> you're creating them as you speak. Uh, yes. You know, we're sort of newer on the spectrum of yes, traditions. My traditions are different from my <laughs> new traditions. <laughs> and that's totally cool. I love it. Yeah. I don't do an Easter ham anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, but what those malt, the malted milk chocolate. Um, oh, Mally's. No, she just schnitz um, um, and grooving. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to, you know, um, when I grew up, we were eating turkey ham. You remember that was like, uh, they sell, it It comes in a piece like this at the deli counter and you slice it up and that's, we didn't eat regular ham. That 
you know, because my parents didn't want to have pork in the house. And so um, we ate turkey ham. That was our alternative. So maybe you can make a, you know, a hammy turkey. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. I, I don't need to make an Easter ham on Passover. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking that. I moved beyond that. But you know what I think is cool is I, I love that you get to sort of create traditions that you really, yeah. you know, you're unencumbered, right? Yes. In the kitchen, especially. <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many resources out there now. Sorry, I just want to check. I want to take a look at mine just in case. Just I've got sniff. a lot going on behind me. I know, right? I didn't smell them yet, but they are starting to get a little tiny bit of brown on them. Can't but not enough. Water. Where will the recipe be posted? Please? The recipe will be posted, um, I believe, on the same Passover page where you found the link. Okay. So um, we are going to post that either tonight or more likely tomorrow morning because uh, I don't know where they want me to put it and I don't want to, you know, ruin the design yeah. of all that. I wear many hats, but that is not one of them. I don't get to do web design. <laughs> So, okay, thank you. Yeah, and I hope that you guys come just as a reminder. Um, so Rabbi Van is doing a teaching live on Sunday. Uh, and then uh, on the 15th, Rabbi Shana is uh, teaching her family famous, soon to be congregational famous, then what's next, the world, world famous um, potato kugel muffins um, <laughs> with an easy house in them that you can buy the frozen hash browns. Um, and make them so. Oh, there oh, she is. We've got fresh ones. You are. There's Rabbi. Oh, that sounded like it was going to be good, but you're muted. Uh, I said it's actually better if you buy fresh hash browns. You can do frozen, but fresh is better. Okay, okay but you, you, don't get the, you don't get the little bit of the grating of your fingers in. Correct. This. There are no fingers involved. <laughs> um, but uh, but that is. <laughs> Important information has been learned. Two have exactly. visited the emergency room with cut fingers. Exactly. Oh, and the know, reason yeah. we make them in muffins is because everybody used to fight for the edges because they wanted the crust. Oh, so this yeah, way yeah. everybody gets crust. It's beautiful. It's like the muffin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Rabbi Shana, can I ask you? Did you hear the question about lamb on Passover? Yeah, it actually is a traditional Passover dish because okay. of the Paschal lamb. Okay, oh, that's what good. I just I love to have lamb on Passover. That's the most important piece of information we've gotten in weeks. Perfect. There you go. Happy to help. That's the start <laughs> of a good tradition. Lamb Thank on you Passover. There. Yeah, you can. A lot yeah. of families. I was never part of my family tradition, but a lot of families do have lamb as a Passover dish because of that. Rack of lamb. Yeah. Oh, oh my God! With mint that. jelly on it. Oh, chutney. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Nice meeting everybody. Nice Bye. to meet you too. Is Thank that you. Michael Good signing night. off? Okay. See you Friday night. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. See you tomorrow yes. night. <laughs> yeah, Friday is going to be a good one too. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pam Bye -bye. Schuller's amazing. Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Right, now, wait. Phone is call. Martha part of Michael? She just hung yeah, up. Yeah, right? Michael and Martha okay. were hus our husband and wife. And then I looked them up because I was like trying to find out who Michael was. And then I realized they were the same person. Um, they're from Texas. Texas, wow. But they live here now? No, they live in Texas. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they live in Texas. How did they find oh. out about us? Who's that? Serious? Yeah, Martha and Michael Fleischer are from Texas. As oh, a heart attack. Have to ask them. Yes. I'm going to have a big mouth and ask. Next time I see them. Well, tomorrow night, right? Yeah. I wondered if there was a Cleveland connection. Mouth. I don't know. Um, and I don't, I have to look, I can look at where they are from Texas. I also don't know if there's like a rabbi van connection. Yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, I was wondering. Uh, so, that is the question of me keeping them connected. How many minutes are left on your timers, guys? I'm so excited. I was depending on your timer. I never stopped. <laughs> Nine minutes. Did you forget to set your timer, Mary? Yeah, I was waiting. I did yours. I'm a few minutes behind. <laughs> That's all right. You are an ex you are an experienced um, oh, no, macaroon no. baker. You're going to yeah, be fine. A couple of years worth. That's all. <laughs> but it's fine. And they freeze really well for a very long time. Um, and they live in Dallas. Wow. wow. All right. Well, that's really interesting. Now I really want to get to know them and start you know, asking all the things. 
And just like Mary here, now that I've summer. got her here, now I want to know all the things about the singing and the, okay. you know. Right here, I'm the counter, which is a disaster, of course. A little flower on the computer, that's all right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> kind of went, Mary, are you a mess? <laughs> no, my computer was. It's okay now. One little piece left. You know, just next time, just lay a piece of saran wrap over it. Yeah. Before you start. Oh, I smell something. Not that I've ever done this before, <laughs> but. Yeah, it smells good. I have to reason? go make a phone call. See you okay. guys tomorrow. Thank you. I enjoyed this. Bye, Lori. It was Good fun. to see you. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Oh, mine are so close. My I'll timer says, so mine. but they're not really. Two more minutes on mine. You know, Deb, been eating the raw dough, so to speak. How it is it? So good with the espresso coffee in it. Oh my god! Isn't that amazing? That's because so it's otherwise it's hard to add things like that. You have to have the desiccated coconut. Oh um, my God, it's just like, voila, it's coming alive on the taste buds. I love it. <laughs> Deb, you were talking about Passover recipes. We're all gonna be yeah. awake in oh. that, right? What did you say, Mary? I said between the chocolate and the coffee, we're gonna be awake, we'll be all, awake all night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You were talking about Passover recipes. And so we don't make, I don't make it anymore because I learned how to make my grandmother's brisket and that's what everybody requests. But when I was a kid, it wasn't Passover until we had sweet and sour meatballs. Mm -hmm. And so the year I was in Israel, my mom made sweet and sour meatballs every year. I don't know. But, um, and so when I, the year I was in Israel, you know, none of us really had our family members, although Passover was a break for us. So a bunch of us had family visiting and so we had friends who had this huge, like ginormous living room. So they hosted a Seder, clearly wow. not COVID. Um, uh, and so they invited everybody to Seder and you were to bring um, your favorite Passover tradition, whatever family you had with you and a dish that it wasn't Passover without. So I was gonna, uh, my grand, my grandfather and his brand new wife who I had like really barely met were coming to visit me. Um, and uh, I brought a Passover tradition, but then I had to bring this dish. I was gonna make these sweet and sour meatballs, but to try and get the ingredients kosher for Passover in Israel was really hard. So it was like the first time I learned how to do like Substitutions, because like there's no such thing as kosher for Passover grape jelly, um, especially. Oh. So it was like, and that was still at the time when I was like doing ketone oats, so I couldn't do corn syrup, whatever. And right. then like I it was supposed to be chili sauce, and they didn't have kosher for Passover chili sauce. So like, how do you do that with like ketchup and spices? And mm -hmm. so I had to like recreate. They didn't qu taste quite the same, but they were a close proximity. <laughs> wow. Well, that yeah. sounds good. I wonder if we should. Uh... Maybe we can, people can, I'm trying to think where we can post recipes and stuff. Like mm. if anybody's got them, like Mary's lamb, for example. Right. Oh, I think we can talk about it at staff meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Good question. All right. So here's what mine oh, looks yeah, like. Let's see. Ooh. Sorry. Wow. Trying to do that without burning my finger. Aren't they pretty? They're beautiful. They are pretty. I can't wait to see yours. They're not done. So um, the paper, if you use a paper, it's not going to burn your hands. I like to pull it off so that um, it's no longer cooking. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to. Um, it's just my preference. Because that way they cool faster so you can eat one faster. Ah, very important. You got to have strategies. See, see Deb's mitt. Mm -hmm. Deb, we have a, a hot mitt problem. Okay. Oh my gosh, you have all kinds of- Well, my husband uses this and I burn my knuckles. I do the whole, I mean, it's a disaster. It's a mess. Not that she ever takes things out of the oven. Though. I do take things <laughs> out of the oven. I cook. Maybe the microwave. No, no, no. So- Well, those I are for the microwave. What you were using. She <laughs> makes oatmeal. I can't believe we're cooking together in the kitchen right now. This is close to each other. We we had our kitchen redone so that we have separate areas of the kitchen for both of us. And this is my area. Yes, <laughs> this is his area. I'm supposed to be over there. 
it. You guys are so cute. We have a so you don't have like a milk and a meat kitchen. You have a Dorothea and a Michael and kitchen. Michael. I love it. That's how you keep kosher. She can make the salads over there. I make the good the stuff. The ham is over there. <laughs> Used to be. How long, Used to be. Have, how long have you guys been married? 36 and a half. 36, years. 37 years, something like that. Well, then you know what works. <laughs> Separate kitchen. It's called, yeah. it's called Shalom Habayit, right? Peace in the house. <laughs> yeah. And we have lots of bathrooms here too, so. <laughs> yes, five of those. <laughs> That's good. Married. My husband loves to cook, although he doesn't do much anymore. And he always says, it doesn't matter how big our kitchen is, we always end up kind of that way. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have room. No matter what does what your happens. husband like to cook? Not much anymore. He used to cook what he would call a kabeba, which I don't know if it's really a Yiddish word or not, which is just a mixture of anything. He would start with either meat or chicken and you know onions and garlic and celery and all kinds of stuff. So oh, anything, mixed, anything mixed together is called a kabeba in our house. I love it. <laughs> so this is what the bottom of mine look like. They're just lightly browned. Oh, gosh, yeah. Right? Dude, I think the smaller one. <laughs> She I said we can okay, Pete. Okay. It lowers the temperature. I haven't eaten dinner yet, but I just love smelling it. <laughs> I used to babysit for people who had a platter in their kitchen that said, Life's uncertain, eat dessert first. Right. <laughs> okay, so for future reference, the cinnamon, the apple cinnamon absolutely works. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Great. Mm. Right. <laughs> oh. Could we have a bite, please? You want to make the rest here? <laughs> Come pick it up and make it tomorrow. Oh, this is How really good. How long does the raw dough stay for? That's an important question. I don't know. I think I would, um, I'd keep baking it for at least a few days. Yeah. Why not? Right? I mean, there's nothing. It's, it's sugar, coconut, and egg whites. Yeah. Right? So it should nothing be fine. I'm just staying on long enough to see all y'all's macaroons and then we can go, but not till I see them. <laughs> all right. But we have one minute left on the timer. That's all right. Everything in its time. <laughs> oh, that's good. So I also have this old, old, old sunbeam. Oh my Ooh. gosh. Wow. My first apartment out of college, which will date me, <clears throat> 1965. I got this at a Goodwill and it's still going. Oh my gosh, you got it at a Goodwill too. Good old Sunbeam. Oh yeah, how do you, how do you furnish an apartment in college or after college? It looks exactly like the one I grew up with. Yeah. Well, it's all kinds of room, but it works. Where's this little thing? I don't know. There, of course. Oh, I'm, oops. I, oh, you can't, you can't see. Oh, I'll have to take them off. Oh, my God. Well, or you can yeah. you can tip your screen down to it is the other way. Oh, that would be way too easy. <laughs> One moment, please. <laughs> One moment. I need to get my heat things. <laughs> what a pretty kitchen. Thank you. Okay. Um... Whoops, oh, all look at that. Whoops, they just went for a ride. Oh, that These browning the, is perfect. This is the ginger mango. Uh, what did you call them? Diced ginger mango. Wow. Okay. You could even um, put chilies in there. That sounds good. And then these are the sea salt caramel. Ooh, look, they're sliding oh, look too. at those Whoa. chips. Oh. Michael, we need a camera overhead here so we can show Deb. <laughs> Here. Yeah, you, we call mine camera or uh, counter cam. You need counter a counter cam. cam. There we are. That's going to lend it to me for my session. <laughs> and then we still have, he took the larger um, ice cream scooper, the big one, and his are still in there. His are the chocolate chip ones. Oh, I see. Yes. But well, that's they great. look really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't wait. Mary, are yours done yet, or are they still cooking in there? Not quite brown on top of it. So I'll give you another minute. Okay. You know, you, you're you really muffled. I'm having a hard time hearing oh, you. I was, I was on the other side of the kitchen. Sorry. Oh. 
I went over there. <laughs> <laughs> I was putting the parchment paper away. I thought, quick, this was my chance. Yeah. You know, I have a sense that you are an incredibly organized person. She had all her ingredients she, out ahead of time. Everything's probably know. cleaned in a way. No, 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 they're not. But I didn't know if we were going to be able to watch you and cook at the same time. And also I had my paper oh my to God. write it. But now that I know you have that phenomenal categorized paint piece of paper. I'm not going to worry about Are you jealous? These are really good. I'll get it to you. Don't worry. You'll get it. It sounds great. Mm. Dorothea, how is it? Oh, it's really good. Mm. Oh my God, it's got the candy ginger mango. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I made a lemon ginger one, but I ginger oh. mango sounds really good. Oh, these these are fantastic. What a great idea. Oh my gosh. There you go. Oh, make it lower. What did what did you infuse it with? Um we oh, have beauty. Espresso coffee, vanilla, and then um the three different sea salt. Oh, okay. So you did it all in espresso. So the ginger mango yeah. was even done. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the vanilla and Nespresso coffee was all for all of them. But then we added the candied ginger and mango. We diced up the hard candies, yeah. the travel candy, if you will, and put them in the one. And then we had the sea salt caramel. Oh my so, gosh. Look at, look at the plating so, too. So Extra these are points like for wow. plating for you guys. <laughs> I made my two big. So let me ask you while I while I still have you guys on here, I just babble like crazy, and I tend I'm just I teach. That's like what I do. It's hard for me not. Mm -hmm. to, was it okay? Oh, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, not not too long and drawn out. You were okay with all that. Well, we need to preheat the oven a little earlier. <laughs> That would have been a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> it says it on the recipe for the record. I just was ignoring it. Oh. I didn't know if we cooked mac macaroons or not. I thought maybe it was not something that was cooked or baked, rather. Well, so it is. And if you ever want to try something that's not baked, that is also like a melange of things that you can do whatever you want with, you Where's can it make. At? I have no idea. Uh, oh, is that the big well, ones, the chocolate chip ones? Yeah. Wait a minute. Am I? Where's it yeah, at? Oh, you're good. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, where's my camera? Oh, wow. Oh, beautiful. oh, oh they cool. smell good. I can well smell the Wow. My okay. Now. But if you ever want to make something that's a no bake for Passover, that's really cool. I make haroset balls. Uh, oh. Dried fruits and nuts and all this. And, and the stickiness of the dried fruit kind of holds it all together, you know, and you roll them into balls. It's also fun if you have youngsters around. Uh, or people who are bored and say, I want to help, right? And here's, here, go roll the corroset balls, right? And then you can put them at everybody's plate and you don't have to pass a bowl of corroset yeah. around, right? And so everybody gets their own little set. So that's another fun no-bake for you. I don't have those little ones around here. You know, I don't have anyone to... Yeah, I know. I don't either. Thank There's goodness. a few in the basement yeah. locked up, right? <laughs> All right, guys, it is just about 8.30. Are we going to see yours, Mary, or are they still big? Well, you can see it, but yeah. it's... Mary, we got to see them. <laughs> the top is not brown enough for me. But... Well, then leave them in. Don't pull them out on our account. It's not going to hurt them. I don't want to ruin them because I got to see them. The bread isn't going <laughs> to fall. It's just, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know you have... How is it not brown? And I made them really big. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, that's why they oh, took she's the big probably. ones. Oh, look, we're yeah. going to get an action shot of her pulling them out. There. No, here they oh, are. pretty. Wow, yeah. But they need to get a little browner. Yeah, maybe a little mm -hmm. browner, you know. Yeah. But they'll be they'll be so good. All right, you guys, I am going to I'm going to call it done. Thank you. What do you well, think? We can do that. Success. All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. My absolute pleasure. And hopefully, will I see you guys tomorrow night? I don't know how many of you are going to be oh, on. services, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I for Pam. Oh, She's amazing. Meeting. <laughs> I'm in the support group. I'm in the support group for services. Right. Everybody's got to have a support group. He refills the glass. <laughs> I've got one of those, too. I have tradition for serve front night tradition. services. <laughs> tradition. 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 She should come listen to Pam because she's going to be amazing.
Yes, she is. Well, all right, guys, thank night. you so much. Thank I you. had a blast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. All right. Good night. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. I was shut down here. Leave, 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 leave. It was great. It was long, but it was fine. The one thing, um, oh, we can stop probably live.